here you have five classes class one is nothing but a classic dissection with true and false lumen class two is intramural hematoma here you can see the intramural hematoma class three is a subtle dissection without hematoma a small dissection is seen without an hematoma that is class three and class four is penetrating atherosclerotic aortic ulcer and finally class five is a traumatic or nitrogenic dissection this is seven sense classification now coming to the functional classification by pen here you look at the symptomatology of or the presentation of aortic syndrome class a a is uncomplicated which means absence of any ischemia class b which is called complicated here b is for branch vessel mal perfusion what is the anatomical locations which is required for ep study the first and foremost is superior vena cava and inferior vena cava through which your guide wire goes into the heart the four main chambers of the heart right atrium left atrium right ventricle and left ventricle now where is your catheter going to be placed the first and foremost is the right atrial catheter the second one is the right ventricular catheter and this is the coronary sinus catheter and the final one is the bundle of is catheter so you have right atrial catheter right ventricular catheter coronary sinus catheter and the bundle of is catheter so we have four catheters now coming to the blood pressure regulation blood pressure regulation usually as i said earlier anything which affects the heart rate stroke volume and systemic vascular resistance will alter your blood pressure so the main compensatory mechanism comes from the vascular system which is responsible for the vascular resistance your brain which secretes vasopressin your kidney which secretes the renin and apart from that the sympathetic nervous system plays a very big role in controlling your blood pressure let us look what happens if the pressure drops and how body compensates to increase your blood pressure whenever there is a fall in blood pressure your barrier receptor is activated this barrier receptor is located at the arch of aorta and the internal carotid artery the various terminology which is used for difficult separation are return to cardiopulmonary bypass post operative hemodynamic instability that means your hemodynamic is instable after cardiopulmonary bypass heart failure developing after cardiac surgery post bypass inotropic support low cardiac output syndrome and positive inotropic dependency these are all various terminology used for difficult separation from cardiopulmonary bypass there are three different type of weaning from cardiopulmonary bypass fortunately for us 60 to 70% is easy weaning here there is no support required or one vas active agent might be required that is easy weaning next comes the difficulty or pharmacological assisted or medical weaning this forms about 20% here you require more than two inotropic agent when you look at the monitor with heart rate being stable saturation being 100 your mean arterial pressure almost around 70 you are happy and everything is normal as an anesthesiologist your primary goal is to maintain the hemodynamics and with this three component you think you are maintaining a good job now look at this four people they are moving in good synchronization even if one of this man goes out of that synchrony this won't happen your hemodynamics is very similar to it there is a volume which comes from the body into the 
right atrium and heart as a pump has to contract to get this blood out of the heart and there is certain factor in the left ventricular outflow tract which gives resistance to ejection of this blood 